Hello! This is a bit of an impromptu reading vlog. I picked up Ghost Wall from the library because I wanted some shorter novellas, some shorter books, because I'd recently read one that left me questioning what it is about a novella that I like. So when I was at the library, I thought I'll select a few. And I happened to pick up Ghost Wall. Sarah Moss is an author that I've been intrigued by for quite a while. I hear so many people talking about her writing. I had the feeling that she was going to be like Sally Rooney or Ali Smith, both of which I've never read before either. So <laughs> I had no idea what I was going to get into. But when I got it home and I saw that it was long listed for the Women's Prize in 2019, I wondered what other books were in that year because I have been interested in prizes. And it turns out that another book that I have picked up for this month to read is also included in that, and that is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. So this one was already on my TBR because it's on my Kindle, but it was also at my library, so I picked it up as well because I do like to have a physical book to read. The Kindle books are great when I'm travelling or when I'm putting the kids to bed and I sit in their room for a bit reading on my Kindle. But um, So this is the other one that I want to read for this vlog. These are the two that I'm reading for this. But I thought I'd have a look at what else is on. So we've got a long list and a short list book. But yeah, I thought we'd have a look at what else is on. So on the short list, we also have My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Cam Braithwaite, which I read in 2020. I listened to that on audio. I've got that on audiobook. And I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. That was when I was first getting back into reading again. I hadn't really read very much for a few years except for non-fiction. I've been in a real non-fiction mood. I haven't been reading fiction. And yeah, I love that. I know that some people don't get on with it because it can be quite, it's in a quite an abrupt narrative method. It, it feels very, the chapters are very short, the sentences are quite short, the whole book is quite short, but it was really good. I loved that book. I did recently as well, as part of my short story thing, pick up her um, next one, which was part of the reading agency Quick Reads series called The Baby Is Mine. And I have to say I really didn't like this. I am going to be doing a video all about short stories so I will talk about more about why I didn't like this one. But yeah, I really didn't like this one. <laughs> My Sister the Serial Killer is definitely the better of the two. Um, the other book on the short list that I have read, Circe by Madeline Miller. Uh, I read this, I mean it must have been <laughs> since 2019 but it feels like a lot longer ago because I don't really remember too much. I do have that on my shelf somewhere. Actually I think my mother might be might have borrowed it but I really like this when I read it but I think I was less into fiction, less into literary styles if that makes any sense and so at the time I think I gave it a four star. I wasn't particularly into it. It's one of those books that I'd love to reread and see if I think any more of it now that I've sort of gained a bit more experience in my own reading. And then on the long list, okay, so another one that's on my TBR that I haven't yet read is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Depending how I do, I might try and add that one in as well and read that as well, because that is on my TBR. Uh, again, Sally Rooney is not an author I've read from before. I have two of her books on my TBR. I've got Normal People and I've got Beautiful World, Where Are You? on my TBR. And that's it. So the winner that year was An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Never read it. Don't really know very much about it. On the short list, we had Silence of the Girls, Circe by Madeline Miller, Ordinary People by Diana Evans, not read that one, My Sister the Serial Killer, Milkman by Anna Burns, and then on the long list, we've also got The Pisces by Melissa Broder, never heard of that, Swan Song by Kelly Greenberg Jeffcott, Remembered by Yvonne Battle Felton, Praise Song for the Butterflies by Bernice L. McFadden. Number One Chinese Restaurant by Lillian Lee. The Lost Children Archive by, by Valeria Luizelli. Fresh Water by Equeke Amezi. And Bottled Goods by Sophie Van Luelle... Lulin? Lewin? <laughs> Something. Anywho. Anywho. But these are the two that I had wanted to read for this. I have read this one. Um... Boom. So Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. Let me tell you a bit about it. So we are following a 17 year old girl whose father is pretty obsessed with medieval life. Not even medieval life, like ancient civilization life. Um, and it's set in the north of England. So 
the dad, it's very much about the relationship with the dad and the dad's presence in the life of the, 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 narr the narrator and the mother. They've gone on this educational thing. It's designed for students of the university who are studying archaeology and they want to do this summer thing on experiential archaeology, so trying to live like the civilizations that they are, um, the civilizations that they're learning about. And the dad has some contacts at this university and so he gets his family sort of put on the course um, with them. The daughter isn't necessarily interested but because of the way that she's been raised she has a lot of knowledge, she does find some enjoyment and some appreciation of what's going on but ultimately she doesn't really want to be there. The mother also doesn't really want to be there. It, a lot of it is about the dad and his behaviours and how that affects the family. Sarah Moss is one of those authors who doesn't use quotation marks for speech. <laughs> speech marks. And I don't know why. I think I need to do a bit of research about this idea of not using quotation marks because it doesn't... I can't think of a reason. Like, there doesn't feel like not having speech marks adds anything to this story. It makes it quite difficult to read when we're switching between who's talking because there's a group of them as well. It's not even like it's just two people t talking to each other. I will say that Sarah Moss has some really beautiful writing she makes some really beautiful links between the environment that they're in, the natural world that they're in, and things happening in this girl's life. I will say the, the girl is supposed to be 17, but she reads more like a um, 13, 14-year-old in the way that she is learning about herself. So there's a relationship between her and, and, and one of the young people who's on this course. Well, it's not a relationship, but she's through watching these young these other people she's learning about herself and her desires and her body but it doesn't feel right for a 17 year old it feels a lot younger yeah I'm afraid I really just didn't get on with it I loved as I say I can see how amazing Sarah Moss is as a writer I love some of the themes coming through I love some of the stuff that was going on but ultimately this wasn't for me Sadly, um, I will try some more Sarah Moss, but there, yeah, this particular one. No, sorry. I'm struggling not to go too much into it because I because it's a short story. You don't want to give away the whole plot. But what I'll do is I'll read you the synopsis because you know um, it's high summer in rural Northumberland. Seventeen-year-old Sylvie and her parents have joined an encampment run by an archaeology professor with an interest in the region's dark history of ritual sacrifice. As Sylvie finds a glimpse of new freedoms with the professor's students, her relationship with her overbearing father begins to deteriorate until the haunting rites of the past begin to bleed into the present. Yeah, and there's this whole thing about how the dad sees her as like his possession and, and therefore how he treats her because she is his possession and that, that was really good. As I say, there was lots of good things about it, I just didn't get on with the writing, it just wasn't for me. So then we have The Silence of the Girls, which I'm gonna read next. Um, this one, I know it's like Greek myth retelling, but from female perspective, but let's just read you the synopsis because I'm not 100% sure about which Greek myth, what we're following. Um, so, when her city falls to the Greeks, led to victory by the godlike warrior Achilles, Brisis's old life is shattered. Abducted and shipped to the Greek camp on the battleground at Troy, she goes from queen to captive, from free woman to slave, awarded to Achilles as a prize of honour. She's not alone. On the same day, and on many others in the course of a long, bitter war, innumerable women have been wrested from their homes and flung to the fighters. As told in the Iliad, the Trojan War was a quarrel between men, over Helen, stolen from her home and spirited to Troy, a voiceless female icon of male desire. But what of the women in this story, silenced by their fates? What words did they speak when alone with each other in the laundry, at the loom, when laying about, laying out the dead? In this magnificent novel of the Trojan War, Pat Barker summons the voices of Brisis and her fellow women to tell this mythic story anew, foregrounding their experiences against the backdrop of savage battle between men. 
One of the great contemporary writers on war and its collateral damage, Pat Barker here reimagines the most famous of all wars in literature, charting one woman's journey through the chaos of the Greek encampment as she struggles to free herself and to become the author of her own story. Yeah, so it sounds really good. I love historical fiction. A lot of historical fiction centres battles and wars. And what I've come to realise about my own taste is that I don't like battle scenes. I don't like descriptions of war. But what I really enjoy is the politics around war or how war affects individual people. So the battle itself, I don't enjoy reading about, but it's its impact, um, it's the reasons for the battle, like all those things I do really enjoy. So I'm hoping this is going to be really, really good. Uh, I mean, well, it's shortlisted for the Women's Prize. So hopefully, hopefully they have taste. <laughs> Um, and yeah so I'll check in with you when I finish that and then I may even try and squeeze in Normal People by Sally Rooney just to round out because it's the only one on this list that I own that I haven't read yet yeah so <clears throat> so we've read the second book for this one which is Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker I did talk about this in some detail in my scavenger hunt TBR but that is quite a long video so if you're not wanting to settle in for something quite that long then I will just say that this was a five star read. I loved this. This is way better than Ghost Wall. This has everything that I'm looking for in a story. It has a really engaging, devourable storyline. I literally read this in a couple of days but it also has themes that you can pick up throughout the book. So one of the key themes is, is literally mentioned at the very beginning um, in a quote. Here we go, page five of the story. I'd been kind to Ismene, or, th or I thought I had, that perhaps no kindness was possible between owner and slave, only varying degrees of brutality. And that theme of slavery, the varying degrees of brutality, is what's explored in here. Because all these women become slaves to the men who are fighting in the Trojan War, and each of them, you know, it's like luck of the draw. Are they assigned to a man who's going to be kind to them or are they assigned to someone who's going to be horrendous to them? Are they, unfortunately, because of their looks, because of their age, because of disabilities or anything like that, just going to be cast out to live outside the camps, um, literally amongst the rats and the waste? And even when you are assigned to someone who is kind to you, you're still a slave. It doesn't matter how kind they are, how thoughtful they are. They still own you. They still treat you as an object. And that is the, like the theme that is woven throughout the whole thing. Every time you start to think that you might want something to happen between Achilles and Bresis, because Bresis is Achilles' slave, you're then reminded in some way that he owns her rather than it being a real relationship. He is, for her the best of a bad bunch, really. Um, so when she's terrified of being cast out and she's trying to get back to Achilles, it's because it's a life that she that now knows. She knows what it's like to be with Achilles. Everything else that's unknown could be horrendous. Um, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And The Silence of the Girls is such a clever title because obviously these women are silenced. Their story's not been told. And even at the end, it says... Um, what will they make of us, the people of those unimaginably distant times? One thing I do know, they won't want the brutal reality of conquest and slavery. They won't want to be told about the massacres of men and boys, the enslavement of women and girls. They won't want to know we were living in a rape camp. No, they'll go for something altogether softer. A love story, perhaps. I just hope they manage to work out who the lovers were. And that's the thing, is this is like heartbreaking in its depictions of how young women and young boys and children and babies were slaughtered in, in, in acts of war. Like, it is so heartbreaking, but so well done. So, it's so good to read. Now, I did say earlier on I might read Normal People as well, um, and it happened to be in my local library. So I picked it up. I do have it on my um, Kindle. That's why I was going to read it, because I did already own it. But I saw it in my library, and I do like to have the physical copy. But I then also saw... Ordinary People, which is also on the list for the Women's Prize 2019. So I thought, rather than me making this any longer than it already is, I'm going to do a second one, and I'm going to read these two. And hilariously, they are so similar. 
in like ordinary people, normal people, like, and I think in reality, the, the themes are going to be quite similar, but yeah, so I'm going to do a second reading vlog of this year, the Women's Prize 2019, with these two. Oh, normal people, it was also the winner of the Costa Novel Award. Oh, and long listed for the Booker Prize. Uh, and then ordinary people, I don't think that one has any other accolades, but who knows? Well, I prefer this one over this one. I don't know. And then I have to say, a book that's been on my radar that I have purchased. I found this, this exceptionally well-preserved. I mean, the spy's not cracked. Doesn't look like it's been read at all. I found this in the National Trust bookshop for a pound. Um, and so Milkman was another one that was shortlisted for the Women's Prize. Longlisted or shortlisted for the Women's Prize 2019. And then the corresponding year, which is 2018 for the Booker Prize, it was the winner. So I won't read this one in the next one with these two, but I will be reading it very soon and I will tell you my thoughts. Um, but for now, that is the end of this particular reading vlog. Thanks for watching.